A final thank you again to our sponsors this evening, Cramp, Steel, Husqvarna and Catalyst, whose support is very much appreciated. And of course to those who bought tickets to be with us here tonight. Thank you once again to Malcolm and his AV crew, the Oxford Belfast staff, um, our photographer Peter Fleming, um, who's been covering today's event, and incidentally Peter does do a lot of work in our industry and he is quite good, so if you want to trouble him for a business card, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. And of course, thank you very much to the team at the Adplane Tap, who have all worked so hard to make today such a success. Thank you guys. Now, one very crucial notice that I feel compelled to give out at this stage is that the bar just outside will be closing at midnight. But don't worry, the residence bar will be open till extremely late, <laughs> which is located near the front reception area of the hotel. Some of you might remember the late bar from last year, but I know some of you won't. <laughs> I closed last year's awards by just running through what an extraordinary year it had been in 2016. With the general election when David Cameron surprised all and secured a reasonable majority. And even more surprising was of course the new leader of the opposition. <laughs> and after some pretty spectacular backstabbing, Auntie Teresa was crowned. She doesn't look quite so smug at the moment, but anyway, that was then. But of course, the cherry on top of the cake of madness was our new president-elect, which was delicately announced by the Australian press. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my summary for last year, and there were no way things could get any more bizarre. I'm delighted to say that uh, they haven't quite reached the levels of 2016, but it has been an unsettled year uh, and dare I say it, a little bit negative. He's such a smiley fellow as well. <laughs> but seriously, on the business front, we, all we tend to hear about in the media are generally negative suppositions from corporate giants or think tanks and politicians. I mentioned today in our conference that earlier this year I'd received a research document from my bank on the attitudes of SMEs. It made me think, because surprisingly, despite all you hear day in, day out, it was actually half full and it wasn't half empty. For those of you not here earlier, just over 50% of the UK's GDP comes from the SME sector. That is businesses like our servicing dealer network. Not corporates, nor banks, or public services. And what's more, SMEs employ 80% of the total workforce in the UK. So when you look at the fact that, unlike many large corporations, we actually pay our taxes, as do our employees, that makes us the most important voice in the UK economy. Some of you might remember that at Service Dealer we've recently conducted a study of UK dealers which has just been published in our November edition and the findings are quite similar to this time last year and very much half full. Now we thought long and hard about today's conference and how we could keep it as valuable as possible but just as importantly as positive as we could. It's true that the value of the pound is putting a squeeze on pricing for some of you manufacturers in the room and the changes in technology and consumer behaviour take some working through. It's true we could also lose the odd corporation headquarters to take their fact, uh, tax efficiency schemes elsewhere, but where there is change, there is usually opportunity for those who challenge and push forward, because progress can be quick these days, and it can turn things on its head. Just look at some of the world's latest major success stories, like Tesla, for example, and the length of time that they've been around. Google has just been crowned the biggest brand in the world and, this is, and it's just celebrated its 19th birthday. The biggest brand on the planet was born in 1998. When you compare that to traditional brand models like Coca-Cola and Cadbury's, 
It is quite incredible. Hundreds of years of brand equity overtaken in, relatively speaking, the blink of an eye. The world is changing rapidly and we must evolve with it. To stick as we are because things were okay this year just isn't good enough anymore. It's what's happening next year that matters. Because if you aren't offering it, your customers will become somebody else's customers. We know that our sector has the skill and it has the expertise. We know that the grass, plants and food will keep growing and as a result, the world needs machinery. Our specialist dealer network in the UK adds real value to a necessary purchase and we need to remind consumers of that. That's why we launched Garden Trader earlier this year to give the smaller independent but skilled network a substantial platform, more visibility to customers who would otherwise be dragged by digital gravity towards a shed or an online store. We sincerely hope that you're going to go away from today's conference and this evening feeling positive about what you do because you do it well and there is no substitute for skill, knowledge and good customer service. If we can embrace the changes that are happening in our industry, let the consumers know we're here and keep doing what we do best, then there is every reason that we can grow along with the changes around us. Thank you for supporting us tonight and helping us celebrate the very best in our fantastic industry. Thanks again to our advertisers and sponsors who realise the value of supporting Service Dealer and the importance of balanced communication within our skilled dealer industry. Thank you for listening to me, which I'm sure can't be easy. I hope that we can all take the positives out of today and be better for it. So that just leaves me to now declare the awards closed and the bar open. And please remember, keep your glasses half full and not half empty. Good night.